Facial recognition is one of the fastest growing technologies in the world today. As law enforcement agencies around the world are installing cameras to keep cities smarter and to help its citizens stay safe, some are advocating that this new technology could potentially be a violation of privacy. Now with seemingly every smartphone in the world employing facial recognition, this technology is literally available at our very own fingertips. Now in today's video, we will be examining both China and America's systems on facial recognition and ultimately answering this question. Is this technology a threat or a benefit to society? Hello everyone, my name is Cyrus Jansen, and if this is your first video that you're watching on my YouTube channel, I'd like to take a moment to welcome you, invite you to hit that subscribe button, and follow along as we make weekly vlogs about China and its role in society today. Now as we get started in today's video, let's go back in time roughly 18 months to July 1st, 2019, to a very important event that happened in Asia's world city, Hong Kong. On July 1st, 2019, political protesters stormed the Legislative Council complex in Hong Kong to protest the Hong Kong extradition bill. During this incident, protesters destroyed over 60 glass doors, pried open metal security curtains, and graffitied Hong Kong's official city emblem with black paint, covering the portion which read, People's Republic of China. One of the columns outside the building was graffitied with the slogan, which translates to, it was you who taught me that peaceful protests do not work. Now, people around the world were very critical of the Hong Kong police force and the government of China when they decided to use facial recognition to identify these Hong Kong protesters. However, just earlier this month, there was a very similar event that took place in Washington, D.C., America's capital city. On January 6, 2021, American protesters stormed the U.S. Capitol building in an attempt to overturn Donald Trump's loss and the 2020 presidential election. The riot led to the evacuation and lockdown of the Capitol and five deaths, including one Capitol police officer. Now, the reason I begin today's video with both of these events is it's very important to understand that there is a bias and sometimes a double standard when comparing facial recognition between the countries of China and America. For example, in this Wall Street Journal article entitled The Promise and Peril of Facial Recognition, the article goes on to state that United States protesters are, quote, members of the mob. Meanwhile, when the Hong Kong police force employs facial recognition, it refers to Chinese government as, quote, being nefarious. Now, this raises an important question. Do we have a clear cultural bias and different set of standards used for judgment? Pointing fingers like this is not healthy for the long-term cooperation of countries and certainly learning to work with each other as technologies around the world are advancing. For further evidence of the bias intended by Wall Street Journal, let's take a look at the very last sentence on how they close this article. Facial recognition technology is here to stay. China demonstrates its dangers, but its use after the Capitol insurrection shows its promise. Now, the biggest takeaway that I learned from this Wall Street Journal article was actually the information it shared about Clearview AI. Clearview AI maintains a database of billions of publicly sourced photos from various public websites, including social media channels. Clearview AI downloads these photos from the public internet that any person in the world on any computer can also download. But this is the catch, without the consent of the person being photographed. Yes, that's right. Any photo that you take and publicly post online, whether to a public website or to your favorite social media domain, could potentially be downloaded from Clearview AI and added to their already extensive database consisting of over 3 billion photos. That's billion with a B. Now, upon hearing this, one potentially could become very alarmed. But there is one thing that this Wall Street Journal article was very clear. Facial recognition technology is here to stay. For example, take a look at this article from CNBC. One billion surveillance cameras will be watching around the world in 2021. Now, I've been doing a lot of research on facial recognition, and I thought I'd share a couple of unique stories that I found as I started researching around the world and how facial recognition is helping other countries solve their problems. One of the most unique stories that I found came from the capital city of Colombia, Medellin, and how facial recognition technology is helping keep football fans safe in the stadiums. In this case study from the NEC, how facial recognition is changing the game in Colombia, where bad elements are kept out of a stadium, the stadium officials have appointed a four-point system. Number one, the city authorities turn to NEC's Neo Face Watch to identify all the football fans that are entering the stadium. 
Point number two is that there are over 170 specialty cameras located throughout the stadium. 50 cameras are located at the entrance, 25 on the grandstands, and another 55 fixed at various locations around the stadium. Now as incidences go on, facial recognition is used, and there are whitelist and blacklist being created of people that are behaving correctly and incorrectly at the stadium. If a person in the stadium is identified as someone on a blacklist, the stadium staff receives an email or SMS alert advising them to take action. This is a very creative solution, and if you have ever traveled to Latin America, you know just how passionate Latin American fans are about football. For the next case study, let's go to the island state of Singapore, where facial recognition is getting woven into everyday life. The Singaporean government has invested 1.75 billion U.S. dollars in the Smart Nation initiative that began seven years ago in 2014 and now employs facial recognition technology in a variety of government outlets. For example, Singaporean nationals can simply use their face to pay their taxes, apply for public housing, and do hundreds of other different government functions. Facial recognition is improving the lives of Singaporean nationals and continuing to make sure that Singapore is on the forefront of technology in Asia. Now the last case study brings us back to mainland China to the city that I lived in for seven years, Shanghai. This is an article from the South China Morning Post entitled China's War on Trash Goes High Tech with AI-Driven Apps for Sorting and Facial Recognition to Enforce Recycling. Now when I first went to China in 2007, sorting trash and recyclables essentially didn't exist. Everybody in Shanghai just took whatever they didn't want and simply threw it in the trash can, regardless if that was recyclable or not. And realizing that this needed to be changed and that China needed to become a more green and more sustainable country, China's government instituted a new recycling program around the country. Now residents are required to actually sort out their trash. But after decades of essentially taking everything they don't want and simply throwing it in the trash, many Chinese citizens simply didn't know how to sort trash from recyclables. Luckily, Alipay, one of the largest and most successful apps in mainland China today, came through and developed a new app. This new app uses AI technology and allows citizens to take their smartphone, scan a picture of the trash item that they have, and immediately they will get feedback on whether this is trash or recyclable. For example, high-tech recycling centers like this can be found at various residential complexes throughout China. This system uses facial recognition to allow users of that complex to go down and upon scanning their face, it opens the respective trash can, allowing residents to recycle correctly and improve the environment for everybody in that community. Now, facial recognition is being applied to various aspects of life in China. For example, it's now very common to see these cameras installed at various high schools and universities in China, allowing only the students and those who are registered to enter into the prospective schools. Now, in conclusion, I believe that facial recognition technology will continue to make its mark on developing countries around the world. It's also important to note that technology is a double-edged sword. Its impact is determined from its intention and its users. To arbitrarily say that facial recognition is a danger and it is potentially evil does negate a lot of the positive benefits. For example, look at the case studies in Colombia, Singapore, and mainland China, and they are some very positive effects of having facial recognition technology. Now looking back at the political protests that turned very violent in both Hong Kong and Washington DC, I think it's very safe to say that police forces should have the technology to be able to capture those responsible and hold them accountable for their actions. In fact, I believe that keeping a city and a country safe is arguably the most important aspect that a government really needs to provide for its citizens. Without safety, nothing truly matters. However, I'd like to get your opinion. What do you think about facial recognition? Do you feel comfortable with this technology? Do you also recognize some of its benefits? I'd love to hear your comments in the section down below. Everybody, thank you for taking time to watching today's video. I hope you found it very interesting, and I really enjoy diving into certain topics like facial recognition and AI technology. Perhaps we can do more sessions like this in the future. Again, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and also come check us out on Patreon, subscribe to the newsletter, and most importantly, stay positive, and I look forward to seeing you in next week's video.